Welcome to Milan Recording Studios. My name is James Pablo Chakras, and today, as you can see, I have a cool comparison between a keyboard and an acoustic piano. The keyboard that I'm going to be trying out today is the Roland RD2000, which is Roland's flagship stage piano in the RD lineup. And behind me, I have my personal 1995 Steinway Model D, the largest piano that Steinway makes, and many people consider to be one of the best pianos that Steinway makes. So what I'm going to be doing today is comparing the default piano sound, and the default piano sound only, to the one and only sound of the Steinway D. And we're going to be seeing and listening to the differences between the sounds. I've been under the impression lately that there are a few people out there who believe that a keyboard, since the sound on it is modeled after a real piano, is as good or even better than the sound of a real piano. So today, since I have a real piano, I'm going to be seeing that for myself, and we are going to discover together what the differences are between the sounds of the Roland RD2000 and the sounds of my 1995 Steinway D. I don't know what Roland used as a sample for this the sound. I don't know what make of piano it was, so I can't really comment too much on that. But without any further ado, I think let's get into this and start playing and see how it sounds. I'm going to first start off with my original test piece that I wrote to try out pianos. Then I'm going to play that same thing on the Steinway D after playing it first on the RD2000, because why not? One thing that many keyboards out there kind of suffer from, if you will, is the fact that their sounds have a very digital sound to them. And in a way, it's kind of almost the same kind of a thing that some vintage equipment has, where it has a certain sound quality about it that makes it special, but you can't really say what it is. It's kind of the same way here. They have its digital sound about them, but you can't really place why it sounds digital or how to fix that, just like you can't really place why a Hammond B3 sounds so good other than it does, and it's hard to replicate. It's kind of the same thing here. The piano sound on this sounds digital, and how Roland would be able to kind of remove some of that, I really don't know, and I can't really even explain why it sounds digital other than it does. Many keyboards do suffer from that, and this would be one of them. So you might have noticed there that the Steinway was actually brighter than the RD2000. That's another thing here that I'm noticing. A lot of the times when I find an acoustic piano that has a warm, rich, soft, mellow sound, I often praise it. But here it is probably going to be one of the few times when I'm going to criticize something for being a bit mellow. Here, let me just play a little chord here. Play the same thing here. As you can hear, the Steinway is definitely brighter. For some reason, I wanted to call the sound of this keyboard kind of milky. I don't know why, but that's just it's kind of a hazy, foggy kind of a sound, very soft sounding. And that, I think, is part of the problem with the RD2000, and that could be part of the reason why it has a more digital sound than some other keyboards that I have played. 
I think possibly what might have happened is that the sound was a little bit too bright and so then it got digitally altered and digitally warmed and mellowed up. But what resulted in that was then it kind of has a digital haze surrounding the sound which blurs it, makes it a little bit more muddy sounding, and it loses the vibrancy that a real piano has. While the Steinway is a bit brighter, it's not, at least in my opinion, it's not the kind of bright that sounds bad. It's a sparkle. It's, uh, like I said earlier, it's vibrant. It really sounds alive, whereas the RD2000 sounds a little bit more flat and a little bit more hazy. What I'm going to do now is play an Eric Satie piece. Again, starting off on the RD2000 and then going over to the Steinway. I'm going to play the first half of it on here. It's kind of a long and repetitive piece, but if I played the full song on both instruments, you'd probably click away from the video. So I'm going to play half of it on here and half of it on the Steinway D, and let's see how that sounds.
So if you guys enjoyed that sound comparison between the Roland RD2000 and the Steinway D. Now while it may seem like I'm being harsh and critical and mean to the poor RD2000, no keyboard is truly perfect and there are a number of things about the RD2000 that really do make it wonderful. One of those things is the action on it. While it's not as good as a real piano and I do prefer the feel of a real piano's action to this, this still is a very good action and I have no issues playing any genre of music on it at all, whether that's blues or rock or pop or classical. It handles everything I throw at it and it really does a good job. Roland's did an excellent job with this action. It has a nice feel to it. The other few things about it that many stage pianos have over a real piano is first of all this is very compact. It's very easy to move around. I don't think that you'd want to move a 950 pound consecrant around with you everywhere you went. You'd much rather weigh, carry this, which weighs in at around 50-ish pounds. It's a little bit more than the Yamaha or the Nord, which are around 40-something, so I believe this is in the range of 50. Very easy to carry around, much more so than a real piano. It's also much more affordable. This is around $2,500. A new Steinway D or most other Concha Grands are around in the range of $180,000 to $200,000, and those prices aren't coming down anytime soon. So there are a number of things that make the RD2000, in a way, far better than a Concha Grand. But as far as the actual sound of it is concerned, a real concert grand is still better. Which of course is the reason that concert grands and acoustic pianos exist, because they have a sweet, wonderful sound and a wonderful action that makes them absolutely awesome to play. Before I go, I figured I'd just play a couple more things on here for you guys. Let's play a couple of chord progressions from pop songs, and then after that I'll give you, I'll go back to some classical, and I'll give you a taste of some Claire de Lune by Debussy on both of these instruments as well, and we'll see how those sound as well. But let's start off with the pop chord progressions, because why not? We all know this first one. <laughs> One thing I love about the sound of this piano is just the way that when you play notes, especially with the pedal down, the way the sound swells and soars and sustains, it's really, really great. The more notes you play with the pedal held down, the more they build up and they get more full sounding as you go along. It's really, really wonderful. Really, really beautiful. This or really any digital piano wouldn't sound quite the same. Hear that? There's no buildup of sound because the way the acoustic piano can just kind of accumulate sound, let it build up and resonate in the sound of the, the cabinet and the soundboard of the piano, this doesn't do that, unfortunately. I believe that would be pretty sophisticated software to be able to simulate that, so that's not too you know, it's pretty understandable why that's not here. Let's play another chord progression on here. Really test that bass. sounds absolutely without parallel on the piano. The only thing that would come close to this would be another world-class concert grand piano, like a Yamaha CFX, a Bosenerfer 280, a Fazioli F278, or a F308 if you want to get a little bit crazy, or many of the other top brands of pianos. Those are the really only things that can come close and rival a really great piano like that. 
no keyboard with today's technology, unfortunately, can replace that. So if you want a true piano experience, the best way to go is with a real piano. Even an upright piano will have some characteristics about it that a digital piano will not, probably like that sympathetic resonance. Even a good upright piano, I believe, would have some of that sound with the way it swells and you hold the pedal down and just some uprights have really good sympathetic resonance as well. And while keyboards do have that kind of built in, many of them these days anyway, still not quite the same as on a real piano. Having said that, a digital piano, like I've mentioned, does have several benefits. Very light, very portable, very compact. You never have to tune it either, which is a benefit of these as well. You never have to tune them ever. They will never go out of tune, which is really nice. Before I go, let me play you that Debussy that I promised you earlier, again, on both pianos, and see how they sound. Again, with that artificial quality up here in the treble. Something about that has a very digital artificial sound. What exactly? I just can't quite say. That beautiful singing, sustaining tone, it's really, really gorgeous. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this comparison and review of these two pianos. I've had a lot of people requesting that I do an in-depth review of my own piano, and this sort of is that in a way. I am analyzing the sound of it for you guys, and hopefully you liked it. You've heard my opinions on the sounds of these two. Let me know what you guys thought down in the comment section down below what the sounds of these two instruments sound like to you. Again, just let me know. I'd like to hear what you think. So as a bit of a recap, the RD2000 is a nice stage piano with a good action and many benefits over a real piano. The fact that it's compact, never have to tune it. And another thing that I should mention is that it has a massive amount of 
other sounds as well. It has like over a thousand sounds. So this would be a good option for you if you wanted something that does basically everything, the RD2000 will have your back. However, the piano sound in it is a little bit mellow and a little bit artificial sounding, unfortunately. The real piano has a vibrant, gorgeous sound, kind of almost golden in a way, if you will. It sounds really, really amazing, but of course, it weighs 950 pounds, and it can only do a piano sound, although a very good one. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this review and comparison. If you did, you might want to go check out my channel. I've got lots of cool videos of pianos, keyboards, organs, and other instruments that are somewhere in between. If you guys like all that, you might want to think about subscribing. If you do subscribe, thank you very much. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Good? Yeah, I think so.